Well, I think the big picture is that we're now nearly 10 years on from the first tremors of the financial crisis in the summer of 2007. So you'd have expected banks to have repaired their balance sheets by now, um, and you know, you're, you're observing that. What hasn't happened to sort of normalise affairs is, is interest rates. Interest rates are still at the sort of emergency levels that uh, we came out of the financial crisis in. Um, and I do think this is something that central banks need to address over the next few years. Um, yes, growth may be slowing in some economies, but actually growth in Europe in general um, is, is doing okay. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if the ECB do start to withdraw some stimulus and ultimately uh, follow the Fed in terms of raising interest rates. There is a, a fixation still around the banks though, isn't there, on capital levels. And I, I wonder to what extent when you look at a tier one ratio of 24, 25%, which is what Swedbank is demonstrating, whether you say, well, that's a missed opportunity to stimulate businesses that probably are still looking for capital. Yeah. Well, I think uh, business itself is quite cautious about borrowing. I mean, the, the whole um, experience of the financial crisis didn't just affect the banks, it affected borrowers as well. Um, and I think if you look at the corporate sector here in the UK and in other countries, I think a lot of the funds for the corporate sector have been generated from internal profits um, and retained profits. Um, and I think businesses have been reluctant to expand borrowing. But there's, there's weakness on the demand side as well as on the supply side. Um, it's a sort of once bitten, twice shy, both from the borrower and from the lender. I'm glad you brought up the UK because there were some interesting comments before that we've been tossing around the set behind the scenes, mostly from the ECB's Novotny saying he fears Brexit problems have been underestimated. There's an economy here, and I think the numbers keep reinforcing that it's doing okay, which suggests that most people have also parked a lot of the Brexit fears aside. Do you think that there is something coming when you see the full force of the Brexit changes? It will cause almost a blunt instrument effect to slow down the UK economy? Well, I think we've already got evidence that the UK economy is slowing down. Um, we saw it in the retail sales figures for the first quarter, which were down quite significantly on the fourth quarter of last year. Most people are still saying, oh, that's just one set of numbers. We can see our way through that. Well, they're an important set of numbers because the consumer is, is about 60% of UK GDP. And consumer spending has actually been driving the UK economy. If you look in 2016, consumer spending was up 2.8% and the economy only grew uh, by less than 2%. So con the consumer was bearing a lot of the burden last year. Um, and so a weakening in consumer spending is quite significant. But we've got to look at all sides of the equation. The world economy is, is doing reasonably well. Our main markets in Europe, we saw yesterday from the CBI pretty positive numbers on export activity from manufacturing. So it's going to be a mixed picture, but the consumer side of the economy is definitely slowing in my view.